all right? You may have noticed that all my reviews to this point have been on Xbox Game Pass, which isn't very impartial for a channel trying to cover the whole spectrum of video game subscriptions. But I can tell you that we are expanding to two subscription because I now have the free trial of PlayStation Now. So it's gonna be a fun week. So this is my first game review on PlayStation Now. I'm going to review all the games included in the subscription soon, but there was only ever going to be one I was going to get started with. And before I start reviewing it, I need to tell you why. Thanks. Um, this is a power cable? Yeah. You don't have mic, you don't have to clip on, you don't have mics at all. At all. Okay, I'll just check that there. So it was around, I think 2007, 2008, um, I had just made the the switch, the new console generation had was underway, but I'd only recently made the switch from PlayStation 2 to Xbox 360. So the only thing my PlayStation was doing now was collecting dust. Um, my Xbox 360 was too, to be fair. What's that? Well, they're on they're on the same shelf, so you know dust regardless. Yeah. The honeymoon phase with my Xbox 360 was, you know, starting to wear off a bit. Um, I was gone to one of those slumps where you're you're looking for something to spice things up in the library. Um, so I actually went back to my PlayStation to try and just find anything that would, you know, reinvigorate me. Um, and that's when I found it. I'm not saying this like it was some hidden gem that only I had found, but this was and still is a critically acclaimed game, but it was something that had eluded me until, until then, and it still eludes me now. I won a hard-fought bidding war on eBay, getting Shadow of the Colossus for around £20. And this was a fair few years after its release, so it held its value pretty well. The game arrives, and I'm elated. I rush upstairs to start playing, insert the disc, and nothing. The startup screen of the PlayStation 2 plunges into the abyss. The dark void envelops me and has not let me go to this day. Thank you, Wario369, for this footage. I was distraught. By this point, I had looked into the game enough to become enamoured by its art style. I had heard rave reviews online. I had seen the praise. I had drank the Kool-Aid. And now, to be left with nothing? Well, I simply wouldn't have it. I searched high and low for answers until I found the toothpaste trick. Of course, it was so simple, so fresh. All you had to do was rub toothpaste on the scratched area of the game disc. The toothpaste would act as an abrasive, scratching the surrounding area. I couldn't see any individual scratches on the disc, so I just put toothpaste on the whole thing. I guess I thought if all of the disc was scratched, then none of it was scratched. You know? Looking back on it now, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but I was willing to try anything. I used tubes of the stuff. Spearmint, peppermint, triple action whitening. Nothing worked. And, you know, I resigned myself to the fact that I was never going to play this game. Anyway, not sure if that video turned out how I envisioned, or how I wanted it to, but it's happened now, and there's three minutes you're never getting back. But Shadow of the Colossus is now finally in my grasp. So here we go, PlayStation Now on PC, playing a PS3 remaster of a PS2 classic 15 years later. Let's go. You bring a girl to the ends of the earth to bargain her life with Dormin, an invisible entity that controls souls. Dormin explains that it is the rule of the mortal realm that a lost soul cannot be returned. But if you use the ancient sword you happen to have on your person to slay the 16 colossi, there might be an exception, but the price may be heavy. Yeah, I figured the price is climbing on top of 200 foot walking rocks. I know what I'm here for. 
The game opens with these long, sweeping shots that immediately set the tone and pace for what's to come. I'd be happy playing the whole intro, but I can't keep you here forever. Just know that it's gorgeous. Now, if you freeze this frame, you might think that gorgeous is a bit of an overstatement, but let's remember that this is a PlayStation 2 game from 2005. Let's look at the other games that came out around that time. I am the most powerful hedgehog in the world. The power of these emeralds makes me invincible. I am the ultimate hedgehog. This is who I am. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? Okay, no, let's be serious. Wow, 2005 was a pretty good year for games. And Revenge of the Sith came out. Hello there. Take me back. The opening cutscene is really the only slither of story you get for the entire game. More dark beings surround your body as you defeat more colossi, but that's pretty much it. You're left to guess at the remaining details. Why you have the ancient sword. Why Dormin wants to eradicate the colossi. The meaning behind the colossi's existence or Dormin's. The only sure thing is Wanda's determination to bring this girl, whoever she is, back to life. Fighting the Colossi is a mixture of awe, adrenaline, frustration and guilt, most of the time coming in that order. I'm going to say it one more time, but this game is gorgeous. You move through vast empty fields, lakes, valleys and forests on the way to each Colossus. The map is big enough to feel like an open world, but it's not one you would want to explore. These are the forbidden lands after all, beautiful landscapes but ones noticeably devoid of life. The light of the ancient sword guides you to each colossus, and your journey there feels like a cutscene of its own, if you're able to wrestle with the camera enough to get those nice panoramic shots. It's also one often made in silence, with nothing but the sound of the wind and the galloping hooves of your horse to accompany you. Then you reach a colossus and everything changes. camera shifts and suddenly the vast expanse of the forbidden lands is used to showcase the scale of these giant creatures. Sometimes you're thrown straight into battle, dodging footsteps as you try to reach safety. Others you start from a distance and must figure out a way to get their attention. Actually getting onto a colossus is a puzzle that requires timing and patience. You must cling to mossy scales underwater or grab a swooping wing in mid-air and it's once you start to ascend the giant statue-like creatures that the silence gives away to this fantastic orchestral score. You use the Colossi's mountainous form to your advantage, climbing up matted fur and jutted out rocks to reach the top. Your stamina depletes as you climb, only replenishing if you stand on level ground. And holding on gets more difficult the higher you climb, colossi starting to fling you around when you reach their weak spot until you deliver the fatal blows. Apart from climbing, the controls feel pretty awful. I think this is mostly down to the game's age. Pressing triangle to clamber up a ledge or get up from the ground feel like things modern games kind of just do for you. The camera is often a chore to work with, even when locked onto a colossus, and you seem to hang in the air for an age while jumping which can make certain platforming sections more difficult than they need to be. 
Like I said, most of this is just a sign of the game being 15 years old, apart from getting onto your horse. There's just no excuse for this. Just get on! Just, just... Just get... Oh, thank you. Jesus Christ. I rarely felt a sense of achievement killing the Colossi. Not because the controls had worn me down, but because I don't know what any of these creatures did to deserve this. Most of them are docile, barely noticing your existence until you get close to them. Some of them even seem to play with you, naive to the fact that you're only here to stab your sword through their head. Some are more aggressive, like this absolute bastard that crawls all around the tower. You have to shoot its underside through the windows to make it fall to the ground, but by the time I get down there, it's back on its front again. As you can see here, it was a bit of a pain, but personal vendetta against this scaraby little asshole aside, there's little joy to be found slaying the Colossi. There's little joy to be found at all, to be honest. Shadow of the Colossus prefers solitude and isolation, a game that's meant to be played in the dead of night, with nothing but the dim glow of your screen illuminating the room. Of course, you don't want to feel so cut off from what's happening that you feel disconnected. And I think there is an argument to be made that Shadow of the Colossus is spread so thinly that it's a detriment to the game. You shouldn't feel the need to research the wiki to understand motives and plot points. That's a nice to have, not a necessity. There were several times, mostly after defeating a Colossus, that I longed for just something by the way of story. There is still an excellent finale, essentially the second of two cutscenes that bookend the story, but I ended feeling like there were more layers to the story that I could have been told, which is probably the result of 15 years of anticipation since the game came out. So there we go. The first game reviewed on PlayStation Now. 649 to go. Um, <laughs> probably goes downhill from here, I'll be honest with you. So as I mentioned, next video on PlayStation Now, I'll be running through all 650 games, and I'm gonna do that for Xbox and the other subscriptions too. And hopefully that'll give you guys an idea of the games you're interested in, um, and if so, let me know, I'll review them. Just don't make me play something god awful, like, I don't know. <laughs>